it's Millie and thank you guys for jumping into the Nook Room. Today I'm starting a brand new reading vlog. It's the very first reading vlog of 2021 so I'm really excited to get started with all the new books that I have planned for this year. Um, I... I'm already starting to feel a little bit slumpy and it's only the first couple of days of the year so I think maybe it's just the burnout of like reading so many books in 2020 because I read a lot in the month of December and I think it's just a burnout in general because I read a lot and I was making a lot of videos and editing every day so um, yeah the first couple of days I haven't really been reading that much and so I hope it changes but the two books that I've picked up so far uh, the first one is These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong, which is a um, historical fantasy set in 1920s Shanghai, and it's a Romeo and Juliet retelling. Um, so far I've read like the first four chapters and I'm really enjoying it, and it's just such an interesting premise, and so the writing is beautiful and I'm really excited to continue reading this book. And then the second book that I have started is You Should See Me in a Crown by Leah Johnson, which is a YA contemporary that came out last year. It has to do with Liz, who is a black girl in a small Midwestern town, and she decides to run for prom queen in order to win the scholarship money to help her get to college. The only problem is that she's kind of an outsider in her own school. She's the shy, nerdy girl who just doesn't stand out, and so she's basically trying to become the popular girl. Um, so I've started on both of those books so far so I'll keep you guys updated on how that goes but I'm actually gonna be doing like a little mini book haul with you guys right now and that's because I got some books and bookish items for the holidays and so figured I'd share it with you guys. So I got these three books um, by my friend Mary. So the first one we have here is Roar by Cora Carmack. And I had heard about this one um, recently and I realized the reason why was because the third book had just come out and so I was hearing all the promotion for that. Um, so this is the first book in the trilogy and this has to do with a princess named Aurora and in her world there are these violent magical storms and so the rulers of this kingdom are the ones who have the magic to kind of keep it at bay. And she's next in line for the throne to be the next queen, except she doesn't have any magic. And so she's trying to keep it a secret, but she's also trying to figure out how to gain magic <laughs> um, in order for her to actually protect her kingdom one day. So this is interesting. This is right up my alley. This is kind of the book that I would gravitate towards. And it's YA fantasy. Uh, second book she gifted me is um, Novice Dragoneer by E.E. E. Knight. And... Honestly, I'd never heard of this book until she gave it to me. Um, I'd never seen the cover, never seen the title, never seen the author, and then I looked him up and he actually has a lot of books out, and this does seem like the type of book that I would go towards. Um, I was looking up the genre and I couldn't figure out if it was YA or adult, or new adult, or even middle grade, like nowhere did it say the specific demographic for this book. Um, and then. I like found out something by the author saying how like it's not supposed to be in any set genre. It's supposed to just start off in YA and gravitate towards adult naturally, which made me think of Tamora Pierce because she's like a more classical fantasy author from like I want to say like the 70s or the 80s and she wrote in that style because they didn't have like a very defined like YA new adult adult genres so that kind of reminds me of it and then um right here in the little blurb on the front it says deep and thoughtful this is for anyone who fell in love with tamora pierce's alana so i love that book series i think that's one of my favorite book series by tamora pierce so this is giving me those vibes and i'm really excited for it um it has to do with this orphan girl what's her name elith maybe so it's this 14-year-old orphan girl who decides to become like a 
dragon apprentice in order to make it out of the orphanage. So I'm really excited to try this one. And lastly, she gave me High Fire by um, Ian Colfer, who is the author of the Artemis Fowl series. Now, I loved the Artemis Fowl series when I was younger, adored it, um, which is ironic now because I think that if I were to try to pick up those types of books, I probably wouldn't gravitate towards it because it's more of like that contemporary low fantasy urban fantasy vibe and I gravitate more towards like epic high fantasies. So this is one of his um, adult books because he usually just writes like middle grade. Um, and so this is one of his adult books and it has to do with this dragon who lives in Louisiana and he has basically nothing to do and so he's like super lazy and does nothing all day and he gives himself like a task because he finds this 15 year old boy who is trying to run away from this crooked sheriff and so the dragon takes it upon himself to help him. So this is interesting. It's also pretty short which I'm surprised by for an adult fantasy book. Um, so yeah this is not anything that I would usually gravitate towards myself but I loved this author when I was a kid and so I do have like high expectations of him and also this book cover is pretty. I like it and this one happens to be like, first of all, look at those end papers. This one is signed by the author. So next I have these two books that were gifted to me by my best friend Ashley. Um, so I'll talk about this one first. So this one is The Wolf of Oranyaro, which is the first book in the Chronicles of the Bitch Queen series, which is a epic high fantasy adult series. And this cover represents everything that I like in book covers, which is our badass female in the front carrying a weapon and looking ready to just fuck shit up. And it has to do with this queen who is nicknamed the Bitch Queen because she kind of like took power in a really sketchy kind of way. And so her people resent her and then the other kingdoms hate her but she's like trying to fight for them to keep the peace and apparently some shit's about to go down. And um, yeah, that's pretty much all I know about it. Just like the barest of the premise, but it's kind of all I need for this book because I'm really excited to read it. And she also gave me The Winter of the Witch, which is the third book in the Winter Night Trilogy by Catherine Arden. I'm actually planning on reading the whole trilogy kind of for the first time. I've read the first book haven't read the second and third book, so I'm going to read the second and the third book that she gifted me, which I'm really excited for because it's a nice winter fantasy. So I'm not going to go into the synopsis of this book because it is the third book in the trilogy, so spoilers, but I will most likely be doing a reading vlog later this month with this book, so look out for that. And lastly, for books, this is kind of a book that I bought myself for Christmas, um, and that is... Three Dark Crowns by Kendar Blake. So I actually own the whole series in paperback. This is a hard copy and the reason why I got this one is because it's from this um, small bookshop, Etsy shop. Um, it's called Bookish Signs. I will link them down below in the description bar. Go check them out. They have really cool stuff and they do sprayed edges for books. So this is not only a deckled black sprayed edge book, but look at the crowns. They are so pretty. So it's like one of each of the three crowns from up here and it also is signed by the author. So Kendar Blake personalized all of the copies um, for this promotion and so she wrote, it's not easy being queen. That is true. Very true. So I really adored this book series and I saw like this had like a special edition towards it and it was limited and so I decided to treat myself and I got this for myself for Christmas, so it finally came. And lastly, I got this cute bookish item for my bookshelves by my cousins, and it's a little mandrake root potion um, for, you know, herbolo herbology class, and it's from the series written by She Who Must Not Be Named. <laughs> and so, um, you know, I don't usually talk about the books on my series, even though I read them like majority of people when I was younger. But I think this is such a cool little bookish item and it was done by like an Etsy shop, um, which I'll link their information in the description box below as well. And you know, they have some cool bookish items as well. So I thought this was so nice and I'm happy to add it to my bookshelf collection. But like, 
look at that it's so and last but not least my friend mary also gifted me with these little library themed perfumes <laughs> which is pretty cute um let me open it so it's these little kind of vials here and each one is bath based off of like a genre or a trope so anything kind of bookish which is kind of cool so this is cute and I love the case I love the color aesthetic all right so I haven't been reading much for these violent delights or for you should see me in a crown so I'm hoping to read some more this week and I will let you guys know how that goes Hi! I'm here for another reading update. So it's been a little bit of time since I last updated you guys and well the bad news is that I haven't read any more of these Violent Delights but the good news is that I have continued on and actually started You Should See Me in a Crown and I'm about 40% through this book. So <sighs> I'm not quite sure what to make of this book yet because it started off really good and now I'm not liking it as much and it mainly has to do with the fact that maybe the setting is just not for me because it is about like a girl in high school it has to do with prom it's all about prom like her getting onto the prom court and then eventually becoming prom queen so that she can get her scholarship and even though I like the characters and kind of the overarching plot of the story I guess maybe I was like not expecting it to revolve so heavily around the different activities that the candidates have to do to like gain the points for the prom system. Like they have to do a bunch of volunteer events and charity events and then do a, just, just a bunch of other events to gain points. So pretty much my um, initial thought so far is that it's reading a little bit cliche like a little bit stereotypical like we have the mean girl who's also kind of blatantly racist we have like the pretty popular girls that are like super nice but like ditzy blondes like that kind of stereotype and then we have like the dumb jock kind of stereotypes and then even her friends kind of fall under their own little cliches we have like the fiery kind of like fashionista and then we have like the super hipster zen chick and then we have kind of like the rough and tumble tomboy so it seems like all of the characters besides liz the main character are all falling under these cliches and they're kind of like one dimensional and so as we're reading and learning more about them i'm not really gaining much from them like they're just fitting into this very kind of trope setting so I'm not quite sure how I feel about this book because I'm thinking about it in the perspective of if this book was following a white straight character would I be excited by the storyline and the truth is I probably would have DNF this book already and I think what's making it interesting for me is the diversity with her being black and her trying to be the first um, African-American prom queen and then also on top of that she's queer she's lesbian but she doesn't you know talk about it to anybody because she's from a small town and she doesn't feel comfortable or that people will accept her except she's told her family and her close friends and so I like the aspect of her being something unique and bringing something different to the whole prom queen thing and like you know fighting that whole like patriarchy or just kind of like the the traditionalist aspect of it so I'm kind of confused on my thoughts about this book right now it's just like not really grabbing my attention but I like it enough that I'm going to continue so I'm excited to see how this turns out hey guys here to give you guys another reading update per se I'm in my car I'm actually out by the bay right now and I'm gonna do something a little bit different today and the reason why is because um, last time that I talked to you guys I was super excited about all of my reads and I kind of hit like a reading slump 
it's not like a typical reading slump. Usually it's because it's like I'm reading so much and I'm burnt out. And this kind of reading slump is more like I got so excited for the new year and I got so many plans of like different themed reading vlogs I'm going to do, different themed months, TBRs, um, different reading experiments, different like book talk episodes I'm going to do. And I basically just kind of like overwhelmed myself with everything that I have planned for my channel and for my reading in 2021 and so now I'm faced oh, oh my god there we go so now I'm faced with a problem that I'm just like not feeling the mood to read it's almost like my brain went into like over fried mode and haven't read since I updated you guys so it's already like the 6th or the 7th of January and I'm halfway through the week and I haven't been reading. <laughs> so that's kind of weird for me. Um, I was not expecting that. So I'm going to try something new. Um, I Like I mentioned, I'm here at the bay. Um, I was originally planning on like going out and sitting by the water and reading. I don't usually read outside. Um, with, you know, my mask on and social distancing and whatnot. Um, but there is actually quite a lot of people here, um, more than I was expecting, so I think I'm just gonna stay in my car with the windows down and read from here. Um, and I'm gonna see if that kind of helps me get, like, I don't know, more motivated to read, just change the scenery. So I'm gonna be reading some more of these Violent Delights, and then when I go to work later today, I'm going to continue listening to You Should See Me in a Crown. Um, and then with these Violent Delights, I only have three more days until I have to return it back to Libby. And so I need to get working on that because I've only read four chapters. So yeah, I'll give you guys updated on how this goes. here to close out this week's reading vlog which as my first reading vlog of 2021 this was not what I was expecting um, I was really excited going into my reading for this year and I had such a hard time getting into these two books and it's like once I picked up and I started reading again I was reading like my normal rate and I was enjoying the books but just starting off was really slow which was not what I was expecting for the beginning of this year but what's done it's done now i'm finally in the reading mood so that's great and um i actually finished both of the books so um i'm actually gonna talk about which one should i talk about first i think i'm gonna talk about these violent delights first so with these violent delights i ended up giving it a four stars so i am a little bit disappointed by this book because i was kind of expecting more from it it's like I enjoyed it, but I was expecting to be kind of like captivated by it and like wanting to like speed read through it and just, you know, be entertained. And I found that I was just kind of like reading it to finish to see what happens at the end, but I wasn't finding that pull towards it, which was a little disappointing. Um, overall, like objectively, I think it's a really good book. I think it's a really solid debut book. So I do highly recommend it in that regards. I just think that I didn't have any special connection with this book. And so I didn't really like feel anything towards the characters. And I wasn't like super captivated by the plot. Um, I will say I think that the best part about this book is the writing. The writing style is very intelligent like it's just it has this like refineness to it that I don't usually see in YA it's not that it uses a bunch of big like words you know and, and tries to be academic or something it just has this like elevatedness to it of someone who is like very gifted at writing and Chloe Gong's writing was also super atmospheric it had the creepiness the darkness it also was like not afraid to make the characters 
be and act like gangsters. Like, they're both from rival gang families, and so especially our main female protagonist, Juliet Kai, she's ruthless. Like, she will kill you in a heartbeat. Like, she doesn't care what she has to do if it's protecting her family and her gang. And then Roma. Roma's are like, our emotional sad boy. He doesn't really want to be a gangster, but like, if push comes to shove, he will do what he needs to do in order to protect his loved ones. And so they both have that underlying ruthlessness to them that makes the whole story have that really dark atmosphere. And then on top of that, there's this creeping madness that's going on that's like making people rip out their own throats. And so this whole book definitely has a very dark vibe to it. And her writing style just made it so atmospheric and creepy and have that little slight horror element to it that I wasn't expecting. Um, I was actually expecting it to be a little bit more on the romance and it was not romance heavy whatsoever. Um, I actually kind of wish there was a little bit more because I wasn't really feeling that chemistry between the characters and I think part of it has to do with the fact that we really didn't see when the characters initially started liking each other. We see them four years after the fact where they betrayed each other and they're enemies and it's a whole like enemies to lovers thing again. Almost like a second chance romance in a way. So I kind of wish that we had a little bit more flashback to when they first initially started liking each other because then maybe there would have been a bigger buy-in to their relationship. But um, the diversity in this book was really really good. Um, there were queer characters, there were transgender characters, there were so many languages being spoken in this book. We had English and French and Chinese of course, Russian, there were some Korean thrown in there. Um, we had a lot of like multi-ethnicity characters. It was just, it was a very well-rounded book and there was a lot having to do with the fact that Shanghai, while initially is home to these Chinese characters is being overrun during this period of time by Americans and the French and the British and just kind of dealing with the whole um, international scale of things. So I thought that this book was extremely well written. Definitely I thought it was very, um, the atmosphere was great. The writing was great. Um, I just wasn't super sold on it. All right, the next book I'm going to talk about is You Should See Me in a Crown by Leah Johnson. And this one was very surprising because I ended up giving it a five stars and I absolutely love this book. So the last time that I updated you guys, I was talking about how I wasn't really sold on it. It was feeling really like cliche and stereotypical and all of that changed. <laughs> like I'm so surprised because all of that changed and it's something that the author did intentionally that was so smart. We're following Liz's point of view, our main protagonist. And in the story, she's coming from a place where she's very much introverted and an outsider. And so she only knows her close group of friends, but she doesn't really know the other people at her school. And so it seems like almost this impossible task of her becoming prom queen because she suddenly has to gain all of this popularity in like a month which, yeah, seems pretty unrealistic. And then she's forced out of her comfort zone a, like a dozen times in having to interact with people she doesn't usually do and, and be in these outgoing activities and be in the spotlight. And she grows from it. Like as a person, she develops and she learns how to be someone outside of her comfort zone. And she also learns how to be herself and how to be okay with being herself around others, even if they don't agree with her. And just kind of owning up to that, which is great because a lot of it has to do with the fact that she feels as a black girl in America, she has to just work twice as hard as everybody to get half of what other people get. Like she has to be perfect. She has to be the model straight A student and just excel to even get the opportunity that other classmates of her get. And so just to kind of see her go through all of that development and really kind of like own herself and be like proud of herself and be okay with herself was 
so great to see and I loved following her narrative and following her journey and because she became more aware to other people we through her perspective learned about other people a little bit more and so she started she initially was seeing everybody in this very cliche stereotypical lens like oh that's the pretty popular girl that's the mean spoiled rich girl that's the dumb jock over there and then as she actually got to know these people they started showing other layers of themselves and so they were more than just their initial stereotype like she's not just like the geeky band girl you know there's more layers to her and so because of that we got to learn more about all of these characters that i deemed as just stereotypical and one-dimensional and i ended up liking a lot of these characters and i, I love the depth that we went through on this journey following our main protagonist. On top of that, the female-female romance was so cute. Like, Liz and Mac are just an adorable couple. And I kind of wish, actually, I don't know. It, like, part of me wishes that we had, like, a little bit more time with their romance because their romance really didn't appear until, like, the second third of the book. Like, it wasn't really there the first third, heavily present the second third, and then kind of fizzled away in the last third and part of me wants more but then at the same time I really really like the development that we got besides the romance in this book and so part of me is kind of okay that it doesn't really have a lot of romance in it. I don't know if my thoughts are making any sense but ultimately I actually really like this book and I thought that the way that the author set up this book from how it was initially to how it progressed to the end was so well done. It, it just it's it feels like she did like such a smart thing by doing it by starting off so stereotypical and then making it into something grander and better and progressive so I understand now why everybody likes this book this is definitely one of those overhyped books that actually matches the hype and so definitely highly recommend if you're in the mood for like a cute YA contemporary with some you know female female romance fluff you should definitely try out this book so okay so that's the end of this reading vlog I had a four star book and a five star book so technically it was still a pretty good first week of reading um, I'm planning on reading three different books next week so uh, yeah <laughs> wish me luck for that <laughs>